Welcome to another edition of Mysteries of the Superstition Mountains. Arizona is a very interesting state. A lot of people don't re realize how interesting it really is. Most people think of it as the major desert that you see in the southwest. That's where Tucson and Phoenix is, and so a lot of the videos you see are from that area. But as you go uh, north, you'll get into some really high mountains up around Flagstaff and heading along the ridge line going east. And then you get into the high desert as you go up towards the Four Corners. And so we have a lot of diversity that goes on here. Because of the unique geography of Arizona, we get monsoon seasons, which is a shift in the wind. Technically, that's what monsoon means, is a shift in the wind directions. When that happens, we get a lot of rain. And the rain is something that uh, is very important to the desert and is really valuable for the flora and fauna and the trees and everything else. However, in the desert southwest part of it, when monsoons hit, you'll get a lot of local flooding and a lot of the low washes will flood out. So Arizona, after a while, got real tired of people trying to drive through these washes and they would have police cars with their lights uh, showing. Uh, they'd have barricades put up. They'd have signs put up. And people would still drive into the washes. So Arizona created a, a law. I'm not sure the technical name of the law, but everybody, including the news media and the newspaper, referred to it as the stupid driver law. So if you drive into one of those washes and get stuck, and there was notification that you should not be in that wash, you have to pay for your rescue, and it's not cheap. And that's why they call it the stupid driver law. Now, one of the things that happens a lot in Arizona is you get a lot of people that think they can go out and hike in the desert and in the mountains, and that it's like hiking back east or up in the northwest, and it's not. It's very different. And so year in and year out, we have an awful lot of hikers and campers that have to be rescued. So I'm going to tell two stories of some people that we helped rescue. And I wish we had what is known as a stupid hiker law here in Arizona for the cost of rescuing and taking care of people who uh, go out into the desert and get themselves stuck. And so the first episode, or the first part of this episode that I'm going to talk about uh, happens in the Superstition Mountains. As you go out Apache uh, Drive, you'll uh, come into a spot where you can turn off going to the uh, uh, northeast. And it goes to a place called First Water, Second Water, or Dutchman's Pass. Now, most people refer to it as First Water, Second Water. Most of the maps have it as either First Water or First Water, Second Water, or they have it as Dutchman's Pass. And you'll see that on the maps as we go through here. So it was very common for me to take scout troops out there on the first water, second water hike. It's a fun hike. It's not too challenging. And it's one that you know is kind of fun and interesting to go on. There's a turnoff as you get up to Garden Valley, uh, just as you're heading out towards second water after you've passed the Dutchman and the uh, first water trailheads. And it's called the uh, uh, Black Canyon uh, Trail. Uh, some people refer to it as Black Mesa uh, Trail, but it should be referred to as the Black Canyon Trail. So we, had, we decided we were going to do the Black Canyon Trail on this particular outing because, you know, we'd done the second water so often. So we started heading down the Black Canyon Trail. So the interesting part is that we were out there in the fall, and so it's starting to cool off, but it's still fairly hot. And so we were heading down Black Mesa, our Black Canyon, and we were having a good time. We were hiking along. You know, we were looking for a cave that's up on the side of the hill. You know, we wanted to go visit before we went to the bottom of the trail and start hiking back. And we ran into our stupid hikers. So it was uh, a guy, two girls, all out of ASU students, probably just, well, in fact, I know they just came into the uh, valley from I'm not sure where, but they were all talking about how excited they were to be in Arizona and be able to take these hikes. 
they had a black Labrador retriever with them. So, and they only had little half liter uh, bottles of water. So this is a warm day. They're out probably uh, two and a half, three miles from the trailhead, uh, maybe a little bit longer than that. And they didn't bring anything for the dog and we stumble onto these people. And they're panicking because the dog has given up. He just can't handle it anymore. It's crawled over onto, into some shade and just will not budge. Now, whenever I took scouts out on these type of outings, the scouts always whined and complained because I always made sure that we took extra gear, extra water, extra snacks. You know, we were prepared for adverse situations. But often that also includes that it helps us rescue someone. So here are these uh, newbies to Arizona are from ASU, and they're run out of, they've run out of water. They have nothing for their dog when we get there. So the first thing we do is we start splitting up. We uh, take an uh, inventory of all of our supplies and our water. We get uh, some water to the uh, students. And then we go over and we start uh, dumping water on the dog to start cooling the dog down. A black Labrador retriever in 80, 90 degree weather in Arizona like it gets to be in uh, late August is just not a um, good th situation for the dog. They just don't handle it well, and especially if you don't bring water for the dog. So we start cooling the dog down, get him some water. He starts recuperating a little bit, but he still can't walk. He's still wobbly. He's, he's not able to move very well. So we create a, uh, a sling with some uh, of the uh, tarps that we had with us and put the dog in the tarps and get kids on the four corners and start hauling the dog out of there. Some of the other ones start helping the students out of there. And, you know, eventually we get them out. One of the, uh, the guy that was with the two girls, he eventually recovered pretty well, and for the last oh, quarter mile or so, he put the dog up on his shoulders and finished walking out. Now, the other thing that I always do is I always have a cooler in the car full of Gatorades and waters and other things like that so is that, you know, if we do get low on water on the last part of the trail, we know that we've got some that's real close at hand. So we get them all taken care of, get them all refreshed, and they take off and go back to school. So we get them off on their way, and then, of course, we get our scouts all taken care of, get them all Gatorade and watered and everything. But that's a classic example of a stupid hiker. Someone that's new to an area, doesn't really understand what they're up against, doesn't go get information, and they end up having to be rescued. Fortunately, we didn't have to call out the rangers or anything to rescue them, although at one point it looked like we might have to because the dog just was not moving. And, you know, we're dealing with 12-year-old scouts. That's a heavy dog to be hiking out of there with. But we managed after, you know, stopping periodically to get them out. So that's story number one about a stupid hiker. Number two is kind of a unique one that kind of tells you a little bit about people in general. This happened in Usury Park. Now, Usury Park is a, uh, uh, a county park. You have to pay a fee to go into it. It's well-liked. They have lots of people that go there. They have great trails all over the place. It's a good place to get yourself acclimatized for hiking, you know, in other areas around the state, especially, you know, maybe going out in the superstitions. Um, they've got benches, you know, they've got places for picnics, they've got watering stations, they've got bathrooms. So it's a really nice place. One of the areas that people like to hike is called Wind Cave. Now, Wind Cave is a bit deceptive. You can see it easily from the parking lots and you know, even from out on the road going in front of where you turn off to go into um, Usury Park. But it actually is a very difficult hike to get to. It's very steep. They've got a lot of switchbacks, and it can be a little bit hard to get to. Now, the interesting thing of it is, is it kind of sets a bad precedent for newbies there because there's people that go out there for their daily exercise, and they'll run up the trail. I mean, they'll run from the parking lot, clear up to Wind Cave, and back down again. Um, often, you know, depending upon the time of the year, they may or may not take some water with them because they go so fast. 
you know, they're only on the trail for maybe 45 minutes or an hour at the most. And they've been doing this day in and day out. So a lot of people look at those people and go, oh, this isn't a hard hike. I can knock this off easily. So we were going up the Wind Cave, and we got to one of the major switchbacks. And people were, you know, we were stopped there waiting, and a bunch of people were going by, and there's this lady that was looking really, really rough. And she just didn't look well at all. And so, as my usual, I talk to people on the trail to make sure everybody's okay. And so I get talking to her, and she's run out of water. Nobody has stopped to help her, and she doesn't know what to do. She's getting a little bit disoriented. So again, we break out the water and the uh, snacks, and we kind of help her get herself reoriented. Now, in a part of this is, yes, she was a stupid hiker in that she didn't really prepare, and maybe she was misled a little bit, but also tells you something about other people on the trail. I mean, why wasn't other people stopping to help this lady? You know, why wasn't people taking care of people? And that happens often when you get out into these areas where you're hiking. You get so focused on your goal that you don't pay attention to what's going on around you. And so there she was stuck with people going by, not paying attention to her at all. So we took the time and got her taken care of and got her back down the trail. So, you know, that's another example of not only a stupid hiker, but of stupid, stupid hikers that are around that could have helped her but didn't. So those are my stories about um, some of the situations we've run into as we've been out on scout outings or needed to help people. So in one instance, I'm very definitely interested in a stupid hiker law for young kids that uh, go out with their dogs without any water, provisions. And in the other situation, you know, you're in a fairly populated hiking area and people just aren't stopping to help people out. You'd think that we'd have a stupid hiker law for that as well. So that's another episode of Mysteries of the Superstition Mountains. Hope you have enjoyed it. Thank you for watching this episode of Mysteries of the Superstition Mountains. 